All right. If you like wicked stylized action with rapid animation, insane visuals, characters with heart, phenomenal music, I got something for you. Oh, and something that was inspired by it, partially. To the uninitiated, one might think it's just a typical Marvel TV cartoon. But to those who love this style of presentation, it is everything we have ever dreamed of and more, considering what we had before. Except for you two, you guys are amazing. And y you know what, you as well. Anyway, being in this new decade, we're getting much better stuff especially from Marvel since their entertainment division has been dissolved. From then, we had the stop-motion Modoc series, the adult-directed Hitmonkey series, and we were supposed to get a Tigra and Dazzler series, but that didn't happen. But at least Tigra gets to have a few scenes with that aborted movie-style Sonic in the Chippendale movie. Oh yeah, that actually happened. Anyway, most of what was said was an adaptation of the Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur to be made. For those under the knowledge, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur is a comic series from Marvel that came out in 2015. A seemingly successor of an older comic series, Moon Boy and Devil Dinosaur. Now, I'm not too versed in whether she gained popularity between then up to now, much like Kamala Khan and Miles Morales, but the potential of a pretty good series was there. Flash forward a bit when the series trailer was dropping, and my reaction was, meh, is what would I would have said if I was just an annoying nitpicker. Like many of y'all, you know who you are. From the behind the scenes content, the use of music and visuals to tell a story, stylized character designs akin to the pre-lobe era stuff, pure heavenly magic. Considering that Moon Girl being a Marvel and Marvel branded properly, solely animated under the Disney brand, thanks to Flying Bark Productions. Which, by the way, can turn any flat property into animated excellent goodness. With wicked direction and style. Basically, western counterparts to the already excellent Studio Trigger. Anyway, I gawked about its style. What about its substance? Well, I can tell you, it has more of that, and then some. You love the character of Luna Lafayette, an enigmatic 13 year old with rapid fire intelligence and a keen style who works with her imperfections. As well as her supporting cast, her recently made best friend who serves as her hype girl and scene marketer without being too um, bougie, and her family. I cannot get enough of them. In most superhero shows, they mainly go out all big time doing bigger things, but who's looking out for the little guy? Even though I enjoy big time heroes doing big time things, I also enjoy the small time stuff more in regards to more urban eras where the big timers tend to ignore. One of the reasons I enjoyed the Spider-Man Miles Morales game seeing worth in a place, culture, and people, and making sure those who take advantage of them pay. And that's what MG and DD does best, in safeguarding the Lower East Side and the people as well as solving the problems that might afflict there. As a New Yorker, the LES is pretty damn cultural since the show is a letter to that part of New York and NYSL. Stop by for a visit whenever y'all are there. Also, Aftershock is a Spider-Girl nemesis and Electro's daughter. Seems they took design cues straight from Spectacular. 
An influence of topics on display gives this series an identity that resonate with real life factors, such as being proud of who you are, winning is in everything, trusting in others, finding different angles, you know, standard stuff. You know, before I end this, I definitely enjoy the Beyonder in this. In this interpretation, this guy is beyond, pardon the pun, outlandish. He's basically Fishburne reprising his role as Drax from Osmosis Jones, and it works. I really want to see more of that. Though the first episode may be a little too fast paced, you'll get acquainted with it in due time. As for me, I can't wait for more whenever they drop, and I hope they continue to get support to continue when they create enough. This show is a diamond in the rough, and hopefully this sets the standard of Marvel tunes to boot and be more experimental. Did I forget its phenomenal opening? Maybe 30 seconds, but I'll take that then 10 seconds of these lazy presentations. And its ending credit variants are uh, definite expressive enough and through. <laughs> and another thing. I keep seeing this on Twitter and comment sections all over, but no, the show isn't set in the MCU. You really think something like this is set in something like that? Get real. Maybe a version of MG and DD may appear there, but this isn't the case. Are the X-Men shows part of the movie verses? Are all the Spider-Man shows in the Raimi-verse, the Tasm movies, and the MCU? No. Are the Loeb animated shows canon to the MCU? Short answer, no. Multiverses exist, people. Pay attention. Keep in mind, this isn't a slight against the MCU. Ran over. In closing, this series feels like a spiritual succession to Static Shock in many aspects, and I am all here for it. Since Static also used style and hip hop customs at the times, McDuffie would be proud. That and maybe Miles Morales, who was created months after his unfortunate passing. This is for you, DM. Anyway, keep watching and be surprised. It's all worth it.